Hello, welcome pen friends. Welcome to part two of my series. Um, if I had to start my, if I had to restart my fountain pen collection, which pens would I repurchase and which wouldn't I? Well, this is part two. So these are pens. These are 10 pens in this cigar box that I would not repurchase. Now that doesn't mean that I won't ever write with some of these again or that I hate them. It just means that I would definitely not lay the money out you know, again for them. It also means that if, if a retailer would give me what I paid today <laughs> for them, I, I, I would take it happily, you know, because it, they just didn't work out for me for whatever reason, at least not well enough for me to repurchase. Um, you know, like say I had a ca catastrophic event and I had the insurance money, but, and I, so I could choose, you know, and, and, uh, try to replace things. Um, there would, I would, there's other pens that I'd really be wanting to replace, but not these. So uh, part one, of course, was uh, pens that I would repurchase. But let's just get started, and I'll try to explain uh, the best I can uh, why with each one. Um, and it may not make sense to anyone but me. I don't know, but <laughs> here goes. Okay, so in here, um, we start off with two expensive pens. And it probably won't be a big surprise to people that have followed me, but I... Uh, I wouldn't repurchase <clears throat> the Lamy 2000 with the broad nib. Um, and if I had, if I could go back again, I probably would get the medium nib because this broad nib is, is a lot more like a stub. It is really juicy and it's super smooth, but I don't, oh dear. Coco was a, about to make an avalanche. So I was saying it has a super smooth nib and it really, really is a nice pen. I mean, I like it and I'm super glad that I got to try one. Um, I don't really have too much of an issue with slipping around on the section. I can get used to that I because I have a pretty <laughs> tight death grip there. But um, I just... I wouldn't ever put that much money in again, I don't believe. And if, if I did, I'd get a medium nib because it'd probably be a little more versatile to me than the way this one does write, which this is good for letter writing, but um, I just can't afford to have the broad nib, the medium nib, you know, experiment around at that price point. Um, and then once I found the Jin Hao 80s and the fact that it had an easier for me to deal with uh, filling system with the Jin Hao 80 has that... Uh, converter, then I thought, hmm, and, and being able to put Lamy nibs on that one, even though this is a gold nib. So this is super smooth, and, and I have no complaints really about the nib, except that I'd, I'd like to try the others, but it's out of my range right now <clears throat> to do, and and so it's just not real casual for me to fool around at that price point. And then this one here, this is the Platinum 3776 Nice. Um, <laughs> I still want to love this pen. I'm still trying, but I did notice something kind of made me laugh. It doesn't even have the converter in it right now. Would you like to know where the converter is? <laughs> the converter is in a pen that I use a lot more. It's in a little platinum shooting star. Hello Kitty. You know, under $10 pen, that's where the converter is. So that's a little bit, it's almost embarrassing. And yet, because this is an iconic pen, and it's got a broad nib, but it writes more like what I consider a medium, which, you know, should make sense to me. That's, it's a platinum nib. So, I don't know. The first one I got, this is the replacement, because the uh, the cap cracked, or something, the section cracked, that's right. And they were excellent about replacing it. You know, I had no problems. It was within the time. But I don't ink this up very much. And when I do, I don't feel like I'm, writing with it enough and I don't feel like it's a real broad nib to me so I you know I learned a lot but that that too was a a bit of a high price point and I did get a I actually I got the Lamy 2000 on sale at Pen Chalet and I know I got this one through Pen Chalet too some sort of a uh uh discount that I had um and I, I'm, to be honest with you, I'm not sure about either of these pens, whether I'll keep them, but I think I probably will keep the Lamy 2000, because if I just use this for letter writing, I'll, I'll get along with it okay. And uh, it's beautiful. It writes really nice. I'm just sort of a little bummed. Anyway, um, 
this one, I think I might have the Platinum 3776. I think I'm still dealing with the fear of doing that again, of somehow cracking it, because honestly, I don't, I'm not rough on my things whatsoever. They, they live in, uh, in some form of a rickshaw sleeve or a, you know, a nice koozie. So anyway, uh, but I wouldn't, uh, you know, like, let's just say I'm sitting here with an insurance check and I'm replacing pans. I, I wouldn't be in a hurry to replace those two. Um, I, and maybe I would have to because you have to prove what you're, I don't know how it works and I don't ever want to find out. But uh, I know you have to have pictures and proof that you had these things and so on. Um, okay, so next is the Jinhao X159. Um, I just happen to have a, a bad experience with the nib, and it's a number eight nib, so I can't just pull it off and switch it easily. I don't hate this pen. I haven't completely given up on it. I'm kind of a slow person when it comes to pen, pen nib work. You know, I'm very, very slow. So I just haven't gotten in here and uh, let's see, are we inked up right now? Yeah, we're, we're inked up because I have done a little bit with some brass shim and I haven't used micro mesh yet. And we've talked about this, but I just, I wouldn't buy it again. I just wouldn't, that's all. And you know, this is just me. It's, <laughs> we're all gonna be so different, but I still, this has been so good of an exercise for me to look at. I had to share it with you in case it might be something you might enjoy with your uh, pens. Um, okay, I'll wait until the end to try to summarize thoughts. But okay, the next pen kind of surprises me too, because this is a Caveco Perkio. And in the beginning, I was quite excited about these. I did, I sprung one of the nibs. I don't even know what that is on there. I don't know what I have for a nib on there, but I know I, I ruined a nib, which is very unusual for me. That doesn't have a converter in it either, which tells you something. But I love the pen body. Um, if I remember right, these nibs were slightly soft, slightly, not, you know, I don't, and this isn't an original nib. But anyway, I don't ink them up. That, that's really all I need to tell myself is, it, for whatever reason, I don't ink them up, ink them up, even though I have three of them and I love the pen body. I like a plastic pen like that, a lightweight one. Okay, next up is the Diplomat um, Magnum. And I will say, I do love still my broad nib one, but the two medium nibs ones, I don't, I don't even ink them up at all. That doesn't have a converter either. Um, that usually tells me everything I need to know. Um, <sighs> and I really like the pen. Like, I like the lightweightness of it. I like the fact in the beginning, you know, it, it did, it had some spring to the nib. That seems to be a theme. Gold nibs that do a little bit of um, softness and it don't work out with my super fast writing or something, or I don't know exactly what it is. I'm still grappling with that, but I wouldn't repurchase it. And that's really all. You know, I would get, um, I would try to get the purple one, the John Doe um, Prismatic Purple Broad Nib one, because that, with a broad nib, that softness doesn't matter as much because I can write fast and it's a fire hose, and so I'm not really, I don't have any drag, I don't feel any uh, funny business. Hmm. I don't know how to put it in words. Okay, next up, this is um, Sailor Le Cool, and I just love this pen. It's so pretty, but it's like writing with a pen. I can't, <laughs> I can't make myself. In fact, they're all lined up here. There's four of them that, that are kind of like that. Um, not sailors, uh, two sailors and some other. I just, I love this pen. Everything about it except the nib, I love, and I don't know what to do about it because... I don't think the nib is going to change, and I don't know whether, I don't know anything really about Sailor. Um, this is more of an inexpensive Sailor pen, but the finish is gorgeous. The size is nice. It has the, the converter, but I won't write with it, so <laughs> darn it. But okay, so next up, where are we at now? Like seven? Yeah, pen number seven. This, I had it all back in the box, but I thought, well, it needs to fit in here if I'm going to have my little... This is a Sailor Compass, beautiful, beautiful purple. Um, again, I feel like it's medium fine. Is that what they both are probably? I don't know. I mean, I just can't. 
Yeah, medium fine. And I've heard such good things from people. So I think, oh, it's, something's wrong with me. Like I'm using the wrong ink probably. Or, But it just feels like I'm just trying to write with a pin. And it's probably, you know, my broad nib propensities there. And I want to love these because they're really nice pens. I just, I'm petrified to go any further cost-wise with Sailor because, um, because I don't like to write with these, but yet it may be that I'm just like not experiencing the real greatness of Sailor because I'm sticking in their low end. I don't know. I really don't. Okay, with the Pilot Metropolitan, I love the pen body and I don't love this filling system, but I could change that. And also I've got cartridges, which I often use cartridges to refill. <coughs> Excuse me. I think the air is super dry inside outside it's raining um so i love the body of this pen and i love the grip section is fine i this is a fine <laughs> this is a fine pilot metropolitan and it's also very very too fine for me and it wasn't i don't know it was a smooth nib though and i know i could write with this if i pay attention to which paper i think it really liked the loistrum paper <clears throat> But this is what I'm going to say about this. I have this in fine, and then I have a purple medium. And then now um, a pen friend gifted me the cursive medium, cursive, cursive medium, CM, uh, in a white tiger. And it is so wonderful. It puts down enough ink for me, and I really like it. So that's really interesting. Oops. Oh, there goes Coco. Oh, Oh my goodness, he's capable of probably bringing this, the whole <laughs> office to its knees here because he comes across the desk and everything just goes flying. So I still, I've, I gave one of my Pilot Metropolitans away because I felt like it had a medium nib and I gave it away with some cartridges, I think. And, and I knew that um, the person was writing in a office setting with cheaper paper and s so on. But, and, but I just, I wouldn't repurchase these. I would repurchase that other one, though, the, um, the CM nib, the cursive nib. Oh, my gosh, that's really nice. So, okay, now this one, this is a Wingsung 3003, I think. And uh, I kind of wish I had the actual pilot prayer. He's giving me nightmares. He's going to jump. <coughs> okay. I think I have two of these, plus I have one that a pen friend sent me in purple that he tuned the nib, and that one is really good. But the two that I that I have, um, extra fine, I think that's why I don't ink them up. They're just too extra fine for me. That's all. But I love the look of the pen. It's also a cartridge, cartridge converter, and I just, yeah, I guess I should have gotten like a broad, a real Pilot Prayer. Um... Okay, and last but not least, Coco is like trapeze wire hanging over here off the edge of a chair. Oh my gosh. Um, this is the Stipula Passaporto. I think I'm saying that right. Little mini pen, and I can't believe I don't ink this up, but I don't. I just don't. Um, I don't hate it at all. Uh, I think what I really wanted was one like what Chris Rapp 52 showed, the older one, the, the original one. Because I guess I don't really care for the shape all that much. It's kind of teensy and it's, I don't know. I never had it leak or anything. Um, but And it has a medium nib and it's a smooth nib. I don't know why, but it's one that I realized that I just wouldn't buy again. Not this one. I would probably try to look for an older one. that, that It had a neater, neater looking shape. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, well, that's it. That's the 10 that I uh, picked out. And like I said in the first video, I didn't include pens that were gifted to me. So that left out a huge chunk of my collection. I mean, so many pens have been given to me by viewers and uh, pen friends and so on. Um, wonderful. But I thought that in order to be able to truly talk about what I would repurchase... It needed to be from pens that I have actually obtained myself, either through channel funds or my own, you know, uh, allowance money and so on, because I think that does 
influence us. Now, like in the case, uh, in the other video of the Opus 88s, I wouldn't have ever even written with one had a pen friend not gifted me a Colero and then I realized what I was missing, <clears throat> that kind of thing. So I think in a lot of ways, it, it's so intertwined that I can't really, um, you know, um, separate things. But I, I'm trying to sort of come up with how I'm going to cover all the pens that have been gifted to me. Uh, what I'm thinking is put them all in one big 36 pen case if they'll fit. And maybe more than that. And uh, just sort of talk about each one. And um, it's just amazing. And 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 very, I think, kind of unusual. I mean, in my life, it's unusual. Um, when it first started happening, I was just like, whoa, you know, I just couldn't believe it. It was just, but that's this community, the generosity and the, the wonder of it. So <clears throat> let's see if we can find anything in common. Well, I know right away with like four of these, the problem is that the nibs are just too fine for me. And that's a real thing. Um, when I end up going that fine, I end up going with something like this, a Micron 01. Now, I don't know why I prefer this, but I do. I, I prefer this style. In fact, I'm looking at another one. It's called something or other pin. I, I haven't ordered it yet, but I, I, it's like this. It's, it's got that nice, really super fine, like in my bullet journal. I just don't go ink up one of these uh, if I want that fine a line because this is a uh, archival and it doesn't really smear so much. It's 0 0.25 millimeter line. It's perfect. So I think that might be it. Like this covers this zone for me. <clears throat> Let's see what else. <laughs> um, I, like I said in the beginning, I think the two expensive pens may... They, that may be an influence, some sort of a afraid to, you know, hurt them or not quite sure. Like, I don't know about uh, long-term care for this pen, but that shouldn't stop me. It just should make me research and, and you know, and figure that out. Okay. So, you know, I, I, I do think that that's a factor. Um cost and maintenance and worry about I guess hurting the pen or you know, scratching it when it costs so much or something oh, it sounds really crazy I don't know I feel like silly to say that but <clears throat> all I know is I've got these three the three Jin Hao 80s and I'm just not worried about them I'm not worried about them at all and they're, they're really good writers so <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of like sacrilegious I guess to be like saying those are better than the you know almost $200 one well they're they're just better for me that's all because it gives me a little break from always using the the uh, uh, different shaped safari model pen to get that nib that I like <clears throat> and then so this one I know that I'm afraid of cracking the section again and I also didn't think it was as broad as I'd like it to be, but it does write really smoothly. Huh. It's a mystery. That That's kind of mysterious to me. Um, no mystery here. I just, I can't pull the nib off and change it because it's a number eight and I don't like it and I'm, you know, haven't fixed it yet. And this one, these two were a little too soft. The nibs were a little bit, I don't know. I, I just didn't enjoy the writing experience that much. If, if they're going to be that soft, I guess I need them to be broad so they'll go ahead and put down enough ink that I'm just kind of, you know, flowing along in the ink <laughs> like a walrus or something. I don't know. I'm really, really happy to have found out that my favorite um, Metropolitan is the cursive medium, the CM nib. That's really neat. Um, I was so appreciative to get that uh, pen to try and... <clears throat> Okay, and then this one, well, I just, I stopped ordering these really cheap, uh, extra fine type nibs because I wasn't writing with extra fine nibs, that's all. And then this little pen, I know I really wanted the one that Chris was showing, but it was much older. Oh my gosh, Coco, be careful. Oh, oh, he's going to end up on top of the little Christmas tree. If you could see him, he's just like, he 
clung to the top of the chair top and he was going to go ahead and leap up there. I hope not. We have an old vintage radio where we have the Christmas tree, but we haven't decorated it yet. Oh my goodness. Okay. So there are so many pens uh, that more that I want to talk about. And I know there has to be a part three because I want to talk about all the pens that are gifted to me and how that that influences keeping because I just they, 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 every pen has a story. Every pen has this, you know, wonderful relationship and, and uh, um, really, really interesting. So I think there will be a part three. But for right now, I'm releasing these two at the same time. And I'd love to hear from you which pens didn't work out for you. I don't think it's personal. Like, I don't think it's like I'm not saying bad things about any of these, really. It just it's uh we have certain things that we need in a, in a writing experience, I guess. And uh, if we're getting that, then we're going to want to hang on to our pens and we're going to want to replace them if something happens. But if not, then we start to realize, oh, th those are too fine for, for me or, you know, um, I think it's fascinating. And uh, there's a lot more for me to learn because mostly I'm just too busy writing to stop and... <laughs> You know, I just repetitively, I'll end up inking up the same pens. Um, but I thought that was just a hoot that I was using the, this little one so much more and really loving the experience. It, it uh, doesn't make any sense to me. Hmm. And especially since this just writes on like grocery lists and everything else and bad paper, good paper, whatever, because it's a fine nib, I think, zero three. So that's odd too, but but also I love the look of the pen. So it maybe that's what does it, you know, where I can hardly bring myself. I certainly wouldn't be taking this to the grocery store. Okay, I think that's the end of this video because now I'm just you know, yakking away. Um, I think I said on my last one I have 158 pens on my pen inventory. I'm not 100% sure that the, every single one is on there, but I am going through my pen cases checking. So it's something I like to do this time of year, really, really kind of look into my inventories and make sure I'm doing, you know, keeping up with it because it helps me to remember who gave me what. And that's a really hard thing when you're getting a lot of pen mail and I don't like to lose track. So I've been working on that. But to have that many pens and realize, um, yeah, it's time to start cleaning, cleaning the pen house a little and uh, making sure that I make good choices. So I will see you on the next video and I, I'll see you in the comments because I really like to discuss. This is a neat topic to me. Um, you know, it's not like saying, uh, if I could only have one pen, which one would I have? It's saying, if I had to restart my collection, which are the pens that I would repurchase and which are the ones that I wouldn't? It doesn't mean that, that, that right now, just because I wouldn't repurchase these, that I'm going to just get rid of them all immediately. No, it doesn't mean that. But I'm aware that, that if a retailer said, okay, you know, send it back. We'll give you your <laughs> your value back out of it. Okay. Yes, I would do that. <laughs> okay. I hope you've had as fun of a Black Friday as I have. I got up early. I went to the grocery store to stock up on pet food and just things that I'd been wanting to stock up on not a regular grocery run. And there was hardly anybody in there. And then uh, when it got to be time, I, I pre-ordered my um, Twisby swipe in that ice blue that beautiful blue and that's the only shopping for <laughs> for black friday because uh, we just don't do that so i will see you in the next video and i'd love to discuss this topic bye for now